little bit of your time to present what I call Innovator Go. And you'll see me tomorrow again. So that is bad for you. Uh, uh, try to save a little bit. Tomorrow I'll be going a little bit into innovation processes, how, uh, how innovation is organized inside organizations, and what that means for journalism, I think. But today I would like to invite you on a voyage, to embark on a voyage, which is my personal voyage for several, several years now. Um, I studied communication science and psychology. So I um, once wanted to become a journalist, or did actually a little bit of journalism, and then moved in interesting ways to academia and finally into Siemens, where I spent the last seven years as a vice president and most of the time serving as the head of business innovation of the largest business division of Siemens. Um, and this voyage is a voyage to the time industry. What do I mean by time industry? It's an industry made out of telecommunication, IT and internet, media, and entertainment. And my personal statement is that these four industries are at the moment converging. They're converging at rapid speed with the business models, the value chains, getting twisted and bent, and finally getting resorted in a new industry environment, which calls for an enormous amount of innovation in all of the four affected industries. And that's, a tw that's what I try to put out as a, the one point to take home for you, and you judge for yourself if the evidence is there or not. Now, so working for Siemens, uh, of course, um, the business division I work for is called, um, put that here, does that work better? Was called um, communication, which is the largest piece, serving large incumbent carriers like these, and one of them is represented here today, and Manfred, we have been seeing each other for a little bit in that industry, so I hope I will not take away too much from what you're doing, but I think we'll build on each other's talks. Um, but it was the largest business division, more than 40,000 employees, 162 countries, 15 billion of revenues a year, 25 million US dollars spent in R&D per day. So if you're the head of innovation in a thing that spends 25 million dollars a day on innovation, that's an interesting idea, right? Day, including Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Can anyone judge if 25 million dollars a day spending is well or not well allocated? Probably not. So there's not one guy doing innovation, but several, and I was just one of those. Um, I was the head of the business innovation, so making new business models happen, new businesses. There were other guys doing technology, and they were as well head of innovation, and they had to be, because these people invested in new technologies, right? And what is the next generation of transmission technology for mobile phones or similar things? But it's just an interesting idea, I think, to spend $25 million a day on R&D, which is what Siemens does. And on April 1st, 2007, this part of Siemens became part of Nokia Siemens Networks, an even larger entity, which is now one of the three big joint ventures doing network equipment and communication networks around the world. Now, in that industry, we have a field of classic telecommunication. That's what we call telephony. That's what you call internet. And that's pretty classic stuff. And by the way, this field is rapidly declining in value for a vendor like us, but also for a communication uh, offer like uh, Telecom Austria is. Why is that? Why is that a shrinking business field? Oh, it's pretty simple. Because if there are no inhabitants on the moon and on Mars, most people do have a telephone line today. And guess what? Our main equipment when I joined Siemens was to put out telephony switches, big switching machines, you know, gray boxes. And these gray boxes do nothing else but provide telephone lines, most of the cases, to residentials, so to human housing, right? Well, do you have a telephone line? Yes, great. Do you know of anyone who is in desperate need of a new telephone line? No, okay. That's the main point. Unless there's a little bit of, of growth, of course, in China. There's a little bit of, of growth a little, uh, in India. But that's coming to an end within the next three years. So you're in a company which, as you have seen, is a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar company making telephony and network equipment. But guess what? The market is pretty much saturated. And unless you find life on Mars, you're coming to an end of growth like this. Interesting situation to be in, right? That is, by the way, what is driving these joint ventures and all that. It's a rapid end of business. 
it's like a wall and you're going fast forward in the car and you see that wall coming, but there's nothing you can do about that wall. It's an unavoidable hit. So the only thing you can do is do other things. Do business innovation, you know, do new businesses, do new business models, do structural innovations to go out in that converged market of media, IT and telecommunication, which is a market, of course, already inhabited by others, like media companies, right? Television stations, you guys. But that's the only place to go for classical telecommunication industry. Some of the new products are called DSL. You know DSL. What's a DSL situation? Do you have DSL, fast internet? Who is in need of fast internet in, of you? Oh, one, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, you are. Who has no mobile phone in the room? You see the problem of growth there? Yeah, we are well beyond 100% penetration in all of the European countries. It means all of you have, on average, more than one. Which means there's an end to growth, at least in the countries we are usually serving, and the same end of growth is coming up around the world. Africa is a little of an exception there, but then you get into a problem of willingness to pay. So yes, for years there was rapid growth in the market, and suddenly it is declining very quickly. And the only way out is to go into other markets, which, by the way, you don't know well, but the others do, which is a big problem. But you have one advantage. You have a lot of money, because this market is a market that runs on very high margins. And Manfred, to help you out here, I'm not going to name these margins. Just so much for you. Aside from selling drugs, it's the most profitable thing you can do legally. And you know that this is true, Manfred. Mm -hmm. Okay. The problem in that market is pretty simple. One of the problems is called Skype. Just to give you one example. Skype now is a telephony provider, right? But it is using internet technology. It adds 150,000 people every day. Now, this is the growth rate of eBay from the first month of introduction. So that's the innovation point, right? That's the first month. That's the growth rate of Yahoo, of AOL, which we all thought is great innovation, eBay and PayPal. This is the growth rate of Skype after introduction. Huh. What does that lead to? Well, the economist titling, How the Internet Kills the Phone Business. That's on the front page of a news magazine in September 17th of 2005. Now, in that situation, of course, the board member sometimes comes to you and says, hey, you are my head of innovation. Do something. We have a problem. We really have a severe problem, and you better find out some new businesses we can immediately go to. Let me give you one other side of, of that industry before we go deeper into that. That's the case of O2 Germany, and they carelessly, usually I wouldn't even talk about any of my customers, but these guys carelessly published a little bit of what they expect the future to be in 2004 in the internet. So they put that on the internet, so I could take it from the internet. That's what they expect as a growth rate in voice. And by the way, they are getting market share compared to the others. O2 is in Germany a very small company against two other big mobile telephony companies. And they expected to claim uh, to raise market share so that voice revenues would keep constant. The growth would, however, not come from voice, but from what, what they call data. Now, if you look into data, what exactly data is, data used to be messaging, SMS, MMS type of things. That's why they subsidize the phones, right? That's why, you know what the biggest camel maker in the world is? Nokia. Nokia, of course. Not Canon anymore. By the way, they were caught by surprise by that one. Um, the biggest growth driver here is content. It's what they call content. And, and most of that, by the way, is entertainment. So the only big growth driver we can identify for telecommunication industries is called entertainment. That's pretty critical because the skills you'd need in entertainment are vastly different from the skills you usually need in a telephony company. I'll give you one example. 10% of the world music industry today is ringtones. So a little bit more than, actually more than 10% of the entire music industry you know comes from ringtones. Only five countries on this chart here, Japan, Korea, Germany, UK, and USA, make up about three billion annual revenues in ringtones. That is an entertainment industry, wouldn't you think so? And that is something telecommunication companies can offer because that's a telecommunication piece. You, you know of wing back tones? The things you hear when you call someone.